Hi, this is Kelly from Petaka Kelly and Play, Learn, Talk. And if you are a fellow creator or someone who has wanted to start creating online using Boom Learning, today's tutorial is all about how to create draggable items and drop zones. So um, go ahead and leave a comment below if this is something you're interested in or if you find this video helpful. I'd also encourage you to save it so that you can pull it up later and pair it with your, your Boom Learning workstation so that you can quickly reference it. Okay? If you have any questions about this process, you can send me a message or just leave a comment below. Okay, let's get started. So I have us in preview mode because I want you to see where we're going. Okay, so this is what we're gonna create. The goal of it is to create a draggable piece that when I let go of it, it pops back to where it started, but when it comes over to the drop zone, it's gonna be able to stay there. Okay, so we are assembling a pumpkin puzzle that has two halves. On the left side, we have a designated letter, and then on the right side, we have an image that is going to have a word that has that sound in it. Okay, now this one does not. I'm using this as a speech therapy activity. So some kids may be, you know, seeing their, um, saying a K for a T, so this is gonna help us work on, it's gonna be like a minimal pair activity, okay? So it's gonna help us designate the difference in the session, okay? Um, so I want this pumpkin half to also be able to stay right here, okay? Um, so I also have a drop zone here, but when I hit submit, Oops. it gives me that negative feedback and pops it back over here. Now this is important for um, your resources so that when your students are using them or when your customer students are using them, they're going to actually give them that feedback um, when they're playing independently. So when you assign it for homework, okay, that's like one of the most beautiful features of Boom so that you can assign it for homework, right? We also have our instructions up here at the top with a white background and a black border and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So let's go ahead and um, jump into the workstation. So here we are in the workstation, okay, and I am going to come up to new cards from images and I'm going to insert a background uh, to this page, okay. Now I've actually created this background and if you are interested in knowing how I've done this and would like a tutorial on that, please leave a comment below and let me know, okay. So here we're going to insert our first image and that is going to be our pumpkin hub, okay. So. I'm going to size it down, make it a little bit smaller, and then I'm going to make it draggable. And I'm just going to put it off to the size because, off to the side because we don't know what size to make it until we have the other half. So we're going to grab this side right here, and we do not make, need to make that side draggable, okay? And the reason is, is because we want it to be a drop zone. So let's go ahead and we're going to zoom in and make sure we, that these fit together, okay? So this one needs to be a little bit bigger. This is probably my, my least favorite part, is sizing things together. Okay, so that looks pretty good. This needs to be a little bit bigger. And let's see, I'm using my, my um, keypad right now to do that. Okay, so that looks perfect, right? So we're going to zoom back out, and I'm going to put this one down here. We know it's the correct size, and... I want to make sure this is in view so I can assign it. And then I'm going to move this one over into the sky. Okay, so I want two of these. Now instead of making more work for myself and uploading another image and resizing it, I'm going to simply click on it and hit duplicate. And that way I have two of the same size image. So I'm all about saving time, you guys. Okay, so now we need to designate these as drop zones. So we're going to come over here where it says drag drop options and make it a drop zone. Make this one a drop zone. Now the reason we're making both of them drop zones is so that this image can come over and sit next to it. Okay, now in order to make one of them accurate, we need to assign it. So this is going to come over here and we're going to assign it to that one. Now we also need some words up at the top, our instructions, we're going to pull our text down. Okay, and just to save some time for this video, I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to take the exact same text, okay, and put it in this text box. Now you see it comes out like horrible, <laughs> okay, so we're going to make it, um, you know, a little bit bigger. I'm going to come over and make the background white, and then I'm going to apply it, and then I'm going to change the border and make the border black. And let's see, I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. This does not need to be draggable or anything, but let's just go ahead and change the font to something that looks a little prettier. 
Okay, I'm also going to make it bold. Some of this just comes down to your personal preference. Okay, um, if you are interested in being able to make audio directions, so basically inserting uh, inserting sound um, into your file, then um, also leave a comment below and let me know, and I'd be happy to show you how to do that. Okay, so we're going to do that. That looks a little bit weird, so um, let's bring this down. And we're going to make it like this, okay? Um, I often prefer to actually put my instructions in the image I've created instead of creating on Boom because I have a hard time um, doing this. It just takes me too much time. I create much faster in Keynote. So I would recommend that to you instead of doing it in here because you just saw how long that took. Okay, so now this is all we need. We should be done. Let's go to our preview and we're going to test it out. So here we have our instructions. They have a white background, a black border. This piece is draggable, but if I move it here, it should pop back, okay? This one should not be draggable. This one should not be draggable, okay? Um, actually, guys, I totally forgot the most important part. We need to have the clip art layered on top, okay? So let's go in and grab our T. We're gonna size it down. That's so funny that I forgot that, okay? So we're gonna put this here and put it on top. Now we're just gonna resize it, okay? Make it a little bit bigger, that looks good. Grab another image. The images I'm grabbing right now are by an artist called Artifacts, and I love their clip art. So um, I feel like I own their whole, <laughs> whole collection, so I recommend them. And then actually the pumpkins that I'm putting them on, um, I actually created those, so I um, have not shared with many of you but I do create art as well and I'm starting to create clip art so these pumpkins I think I'm gonna call them um, articulation pumpkin puzzles but if you're interested leave a comment below and I will send you the link for them as well so they'll have all the all the phonemes that you could want okay so now we are ready to go preview all right so here we have our draggable letter we can drag it over here it should go to T right um, another thing I'll point out is if you want to make something like this um, be able to say the word T or say the word key. I can do another video on that as well. It's pretty easy and I think it's a fantastic feature that um, if you are selling boom cards, I highly encourage you to use sound because it's just way more engaging for students, right? So let's move this one down here to make sure that it gives us that negative feedback. It does. Okay, we're going to move it over here and positive feedback. Okay, all right, so that looks great. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I am so excited to hear what you're creating this fall, and please let me know what else you'd like to learn how to do. Um, I love creating on Boom, and I would be more than happy to share my knowledge with new creators. All right, have a great day, you guys.